Hello, I played 60 games of Lizardman in the Season 1 Blood Bowl 3 ladder. And this is the video where I tell you how that went. We're going to look at the team build I used, how well it went, how far I climbed, um, some of the skill choices I made, what teams I've played against, and what conclusions I've drawn from playing Lizardman in Blood Bowl 3. Let's get started, shall we? During Season 1 of Blood Bowl 3, there is no good way of keeping track of your team's games. You do get a win, loss and draw counter on the uh, ladder page, but that's about it. Luckily, I stream all of my games and I also record them. Most of them have been on this channel already. So I have a lot of extra information, which I have put together in a horrifically designed spreadsheet. Now, I won't necessarily show you this spreadsheet because, as mentioned, it's ugly, but it did help me draw a bunch of conclusions about how the ladder works and what teams are playing in it. But that's a bit later. First, let's look at the team I started with. With the new Blood Bowl 2020 rule set, the cost of teams have changed, meaning when I started uh, my Lizardman team, I couldn't afford to get, well, everything so what i elected to do is go for uh six sauruses and then five skinks well specifically four skinks and one chameleon skink the chameleon skinks are slightly more expensive they cost 70 rather than 60 but they do have uh that kickoff return skill meaning in theory at least or i'd hoped I would be able to uh, get that piece closer to the ball more often, more easily pick up the ball and score quicker if I needed to. They also had shadowing, which I felt could be useful in some instances against other teams. It turns out, not really, but it was fun. Uh, I couldn't afford an apothecary. I, of course, didn't get any cheerleaders or any assistant coaches. Um, and I got two re-rolls, desperately wanting more, because, of course, uh, the Lizardman team doesn't start with any block at all, and they don't have any skills to pick up the ball either. So all they are really are is just really fast, and half of them are really strong, and the other half are, you know, well, not that. Instead, I elected to go for five out of six dedicated fans, thinking that the extra dedicated fans would give me a lot more uh, fan factor, a lot more people coming to the games, and thus more money after each game, hoping that my high fan factor would kind of um, push my money growth forward so that I could then quickly buy an apothecary and then after a few more games get the croxigore because I knew I wanted the croxigore. Okay, we're having a quick cat break because apparently uh, I'm not allowed to talk into a camera without Thursday being present. Okay, so while Thursday is uh, staying okay still, uh, let's compare uh, the first build or game one with the highest TV the team ever got to. The highest they got was uh, 1,970, um, and that includes a full list of Saurus, a Croxigor, uh, two Chameleon Skinks, and then a full set of uh, normal Skinks. Now, uh, this team I didn't actually play a game with, because I felt like this TV was too heavy and I had too many Skinks, so I did kick two of them after this. But it's interesting to see that this is around, I think, 40, 40 to 50 games in. And we have three surviving uh, Saurus from the start of the ladder. That being Takoshu's Drool and Hoopalia. I think let's, let's do a quick look and see. Yes, we have Math Machine and we have Athros 13 are our surviving skinks. And then pretty much everything else is uh well they've been replaced uh the fact that i had so many saurus replaced it's not something i uh, um i was expecting but i also played 60 games so at some point things are just gonna die and speaking of dying here is the final team after our last game unfortunately uh, we got rocked 
And as you can see here, we have three pieces that are missed next. And it's essentially all of them are very important to this team. The three Saurus blockers, our main blitzer with Mighty Blow and Tackle, our secondary uh, injury causer with Guard and uh, Mighty Blow, and uh, Thuanir here, who just has Guard but has also lost armor. So is uh, not feeling great. And of course, the Habel here who has been our ball carrier for most of the second part of the season after Math Machine uh, died. Um, so let's quickly go over the skills I picked for my players and why I pick them. We'll start with the Croxigor. So starting out here, uh, I went for block. Block is a, a secondary skill, so it actually costs me more than six SPP to get this, but I felt like it was important enough because block does so much for a big guy. After that, we followed up with guard, and this was essentially because A, it's cheap to get. It is a primary skill for the Crocs. And I think defensive, that is a double skill. So it costs, you know, uh, twice as much. And it's the third skill. So it's pretty expensive. But defensive together with strength uh, five and standing next to the Saurus with strength four and guard, I felt like this would be really annoying for most other teams I'd come up against. It'd be super annoying against Dorfs. It'd be able to deal with if you're Nurgle or Chaos, but it will still be annoying and they'll have to do it in a certain way to deal with it. So I thought it would make more sense than Stand Firm, even though Stand Firm is probably like the smarter choice because it makes sure that uh, the Crocs never moves. Now, unfortunately, Leveling up the Crocs did take quite a bit uh, of time, especially considering I wanted to get block first. Then it was a question of making sure that you actually attacked with the Croxigore as often as possible so you could make use out of the block and mighty blow uh, synergy. But at the end of the day, he did his job and he behaved pretty well, actually. Uh, going over to our Saurus, uh, Tarko Shoes here uh, has from the start been our main blitzer, one of the first Saurus to get a second skill. Of course, I made sure to give all of them block uh, first. Um, and then Mighty Blow. And at that point, because I didn't have a good way of dealing or hurting uh, Dark Elves or uh, Saur not Saurus, but Skinks in the mirror match, I decided to, okay, let's lean into the Blitz here and get Tackle, because I need some, and it seems to make sense here. Once we had all of this, uh, I late in the run decided to get Guard as well, just to make sure that all of my Saurus had Guard, and it just made sense. I couldn't really think of anything else I wanted more. Uh, Drool, uh 13 here, um, started Block, then got Guard, then got Mighty Blow and then late uh, decided to get Stand Firm because at that point I didn't need any more tackle. Uh, all of these seemed really good. More uh, Block, Guard, Mighty Blow. And then Block, Guard, Block, Guard. Ignore the injuries here. Uh, and then finally our back up uh, Tackle Blitzer. At some point I was like, I need more than one tackle because our main Blitzer is actually let's go back to him actually has a lot of uh niggles which meant that if there was any type of uh proper casualty it's very likely that Tarka shoes wouldn't get badly hurt but would get something worse like miss next game or something similar which means i'd have to play a game without a tackle piece and i didn't want to do that so, uh, those are all of our Sauras. The other ones that are interesting, I think, for a Listerman build and that I try to always keep around was, first of all, have a dedicated ball carrier. 
the way this build usually went was that as soon as I got like enough SVP on a fresh skink, I tried to random a general uh, secondary skill because it's uh, less expensive and uh, that way if it's a good skill I'll keep them and that's how I got a lot of the early uh, not a lot of the early ones but some of the block skills or sure hands and if I didn't have a dedicated uh, ball carrier when I got sure hands or block I was like well this is now my ball carrier because blodge is very good and then I try to get the other skill as quickly as possible uh, and pay for that secondary skill normally and then just uh, keep going essentially uh, the other uh, type of skink I wanted to make sure I had was a, a sneaky git dirty player this essentially worked the same way on the general I tried to uh, random a quick um, random general skill and if that was dirty player I would then go into sneaky git um, I would prefer to have two of these, but I never did. And admittedly, I really only need one per turn anyways, so I don't think I would have gotten much more use out of two having them at the same time. And that's kind of, outside of that, most of my skinks, as you can see, you know, they died at some point. So a lot of these were just rotated in, uh, or out, um... Not many of them got to a high SPP. And honestly, if the Habil here uh, would have gotten more SPPs, currently sitting at 12, I probably would have just kept building this into uh, a, char um, a characteristic role because uh, the Skink likes movement, they like strength, they like agility, they don't care about passing, uh, and they like armor value. So literally everything here is good. Admittedly, I probably wouldn't pick strength because it's so much extra TV, but lots of options. So, my advice is make sure you have a ball carrier skink, make sure you have a fouling skink, and if you want to run with a chameleon skink uh, to kind of control the backfield, do so. I find that they were like, they were not needed, uh, the normal skinks. Do the same stuff equally well and they are slightly faster admittedly the movement seven rarely was an issue uh but you know i think i won one or two games thanks to shadowing so there is something to say about that but in the current meta there weren't many pieces that had a lot less uh movement that tried to dodge away from the chameleon skink in some instances it was uh, beastman but they have movement six so you only get plus one on your roll to keep the shadowing going and a five plus to force another dodge honestly it didn't happen that often and it didn't come up that often either finally when it came to the saurus my suggestion is get block first then get guard or a mighty blow depending on what you feel is needed the most you want to have guard on everyone you probably want to have mighty blow on a lot of them as well you need tackle on someone and stand firm is fine um uh, i did not random any of the soros uh, skills because i felt like it's it was so clear what the good skills were meaning block guard mighty blow tackle stand firm that i never really wanted to risk a, a random skill and have something that wasn't useful especially considering how hard it is to get spp on these guys outside of just uh casualties on a block i don't think i scored much with the blockers uh the soros blockers i tried to but realistically, I was often very worried that I wouldn't be able to do it in time. I didn't want to risk uh, trying to dodge or blitz away from something. So most of the time, I was just more keen on getting the touchdown in and making sure I won the game rather than getting the SPP on the Lizardmen. Lastly, I never got any cheerleaders. I never got any assistant coaches. 
I decided to get a third reroll, but I never felt I needed more than that. Uh, my dedicated fans went up to seven when it went well, and they went down when it didn't go so well. Um, the reason it's sitting at one currently is because, as I mentioned, the last game of the season, I did concede to save the team, and if you concede, you lose 1d3 dedicated fans. I, of course, lost three. Lastly, one thing to note is that we have a shit ton of money. Money was never a problem after the first few games. I think that was partly because I did have a lot of dedicated fans at the start, but it also meant that even if my team got a bit banged up, I could always buy up and make sure I had a full team for the next game. Often, I bought one or two skinks to then, after a game where my better skinks had recovered from a miss next, I just kicked the fresh skinks because I had so much money that I could. So, at the end of the season, I made it all the way up to SR 1963. I did not make it into the top 200. You need to have over 2,000 SR for that, and I was just short. And in my final game, Sith Trooper came and ruined my team, and I was just out of time, unfortunately. But I'm sure you want to know how I did in total. So... Uh, let's look at the stats, shall we? As mentioned, I played 60 games on the ladder with this Lizardman team. Out of those games, I won 36 of them, I lost 14 of them, and I drew 10 of them. Um, in total, I had 7 concedes out of those wins. I did concede once, which was the final game. Um, and the most prominent teams I went up against were Dwarfs 11 times, Chaos 11 times, Dark Elves 9 times, and Lizardmen 9 times. After that, we have Orcs at 6, Humans on 4, Skaven on 3, Black Orcs on 2, Nurgle on 2, and Imperial Nobility once. Which means I did never, ever play against Pro Elves, Chaos Renegade, or Old World Alliance. The uh, team I had, let's see, the most wins against were Dwarfs. In total, I won uh, seven. Uh, I lost two and had one draw. Against Chaos, the other Bashir teams, I had five wins, three losses, and three draws. The trickiest team for me, I feel like, was uh, Dark Elves, where I won four of them. Actually, I won a total of six of them because they conceded twice. I lost tw twice and I had one draw, uh, but they were more like down to the wire. The easiest matchups were, for whatever reason, against humans. Um, I fought humans four times and I won all time. All in all, uh, this season uh, was pretty bashy, so it meant that I had to spend a lot of time trying to get my um, Sauras up, because they were, of course, the meat that could kind of stand up against the Onslaught from Dwarves and Chaos to a larger extent, and just make sure that I had my Skinks, well, safely tucked away in the back line. Now, that's the idea I went in with. That's not really how it ended up happening. But that's what I wanted to do at the start of every game. Two other interesting takeaways from my stat sheet here is the SR progression and the team value progression. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, SR, so the skill rating progression. This is the thing that decides on that you have to get over a certain uh, limit to get into the next division so you start up uh, you start at bronze which was a thousand silver was uh, 1200 and then for every two uh, 200 sr you go up a division and then finally once you reach 2000 you're in the top division which i didn't get to but as you can see here on this lovely graph uh, it started out pretty slow uh, lots of games down in bronze and this was also during a uh, a 13 game no loss streak uh however at the start of the season cyanide hadn't tweaked the sr numbers yet so you got less sr 
per win. We can then see that after a few games, we have a massive bump. Um, and then we have a dip where I take my first two losses. And then I slowly climb again. Emphasis on slowly. And that's because there is a bit of a... There's a, some wins and then I get into a lot of draw win, draw loss. Which kind of keeps me uh, level up until I get another... Uh, massive win streak and skyrocket into diamond for the first time. I then get beat down and then I have a slow decline of win, loss, loss, win, loss, loss, draw, loss, win, loss. And I, you can see that I slowly go down again up until I go on another massive win streak and I just steadily climb, climb, climb. And then my team gets murdered. For the team value, which might actually be even more interesting. Um, so we started just below 1000. And then pretty quickly, actually, as you can see, shot up to uh, 1400, then 1600. And then we kind of go up and down. And most of this team value dip is because one of my higher value players are missed next for a game or two. Uh, so they're not necessarily dead, they're just missing for a game, and that's when we shoot back out. But after like around uh, 15 games or so, I'm already at uh, 1600 and then 1800, and that then that's kind of where I stay put, because I realize that I can't really go higher than this unless I buy a lot of extra players and roster them, and I didn't feel that that was necessary. So once the team value actually plateaus, that's mainly due to me mitigating um, TV bloat for season two. Of course, Cyanide has said that the max TV you can have in the ladder this season is 2,000. If that's something you're worried about, my experience after 60 games of Lizard Men is that you're not going to get to that. So, if you want to play something where you don't have to worry about it, Lissamon is probably the team to go for. So, what is the conclusion then? Well, uh, a few things. First of all, was it fun to play Lissamon on uh, the ladder, Season 1? I would say yes. Uh, because they were, you know, a bit different compared to, to Dark Elves. They were definitely a bit different compared to Chaos uh, and Nurgle. Um, Thursday appeared to like them as well, even though she's... Uh, okay, fine. I'm not even going to try anymore. Um, <laughs> I think Lizardmen are... They're not going to be the strongest team on the ladder, but a good coach can win with any team. They're just going to have a bad time against another good coach with a better team. Um, there isn't really much you can do about that. Um, they're... Are, you know, dwarfs. There's been a lot of dwarfs in season one. Uh, Lizardmen don't necessarily like dwarfs, especially not early on when the dwarfs have uh, block and tackle and you you don't have any of that. However, uh, I didn't find dwarfs to be much of a problem because they're slow. Um, and, well, that's pretty much it. Uh, I won against them. Uh, just the same as I won against uh, most other teams. So that's totally fine. Uh, I think Listen Men might become stronger in later seasons in the sense that there'll be less people playing them. Thus, coaches might not be as prepared to face them. Uh, season 1, I knew I was going to go up against Dorfs. I knew I was going to go up against Chaos. I knew I was going to go up against Dark Elf. And that also meant that I spec'd a lot of my skills uh, for my players. Based on that, I decided to get two tackle pieces on my Sauros because I knew I was going to run into a decent amount of dodge and it felt worthy to do that. On a uh, In a season later on when there's a larger spread of playable teams, Lizard Men will probably be stronger because people will not have spec'd too much against it. Possibly. Um, it's a fun team. I think they will work out great. And I think, you know, if you still 
build a similar team where you get some uh, some tackle on your Sauras early if you can. Uh, they might uh, be decent for Season 2 as well. Um, but at the end of the day, I do think it comes down to flavor and what you like to play. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed Lizardmen. It's not normally the team I'd, uh, I'd play. But you know what? It worked out pretty well. And now next season I get to start in Platinum. So for Season 2, I'm going into Top 200. That's just how it's going to be.